Are we rolling? Oh, hey! Welcome to the channel. And my name is Ted, and I'm a techie. It just happens to be I'm also an audiophile, a video enthusiast, and a gadget geek. So we talk about everything tech in this channel. And thank you very much for joining. And today, we're going to talk about the Wim Mini Music Streamer. And this one normally sells about $109, and it's always on sale for $99. So for less than $100, is this streamer the best? You're going to find out. And since this is my first video, I am going to give away this uh, Wim Mini to one of you lucky subscribers. I will talk about the details at the very end of this video, so stay tuned for that. Let's get in and talk about the Wim Mini streamer. All right, let's do a quick unboxing. It comes with this manual. And the Vim Mini itself. Let's peel off this plastic protector. And in this box, we've got some accessories. Power adapter, which is 5 volt, 1 amp. We've got a power cable, which is a USB-C to USB-A cable. We got an aux cable, 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter aux cable. And we have a 3.5 millimeter to stereo RCA, to RCA cable. That's for connecting to your amp. And we have got a digital optical SPDIF cable. And that's pretty much it. Okay, let's talk about the streamer itself. Now, this is pretty small. And on top of it, we've got the responsive touch button. It's a three button layout here. It's got the play, pause button on the, on the middle and the volume up and down buttons on the sides. And talking about the ports, we have the USB-C power and we've got a uh, 3.5 millimeter aux input and output. So you can plug a um, external audio source into this and um, control the volume through this and just pretty much use it as a uh, preamp. So that was very neat. And also we got the aux out, either connect a headphone or connect the provider 3.5 millimeter to the RCA cable into your uh, amplifier. And uh, we also got a digital output, which is the optical SPDIF uh, port here. And you can, use the provided cable to connect to the digital input of your amplifier. So that's pretty much it. Yeah. Now let's get this um, booted up and then uh, we go through the initial setup. So now I've got this plugged in and I've got my uh, iPhone here and uh, we need to download an app called Vim Home from the uh, App Store. And uh, initially, while we plug this in, there is a small LED light on the top and it blinks white, which means it's ready for pairing. So let's go ahead and uh, download the app. All right, we go to the App Store and search for Vim Home. And there it is. So download this. Okay, once it's ready, open up the app. Say yes to, you know, connect to other devices. Yes, you're allowing the app to connect to other devices. Let's click on Let's Start. And next, we do need to provide the location, the app to work. So I'm going to allow while using app. So it would like to, so say, allow Bluetooth. It has already detected that, you know, this Wim Mini streamer is nearby. So let's go ahead and set it up. And uh, it is asking us whether you would be using the aux output or the optical output. Now, for now, let me go with the aux output. Next. And we need to provide the network password at this point. Okay, it's successfully connected to the network. And then click on next. It actually does update the new firmware that takes around five to seven minutes. And since I've already set this up earlier, it, it has already got the latest firmware. So it's skipping that step now. I'm going to name this as Vim Mini and then click on Next. 
This also has a remote control and that's an added accessory. For the fact I do have a remote that came with uh, the Wim amp, I might try that with uh, the Mini as well. It's, it's not going to be any different. So wait for the Wim amp uh, review and I will talk about the features of the remote there. Portal measurement of audio path latency. Now I'm going to skip this. Yeah, we're pretty much done now. So click on done. All right, now the, the Wim Mini shows up and also I do have a Wim amp. That's a review of that is coming up uh, soon after this. Please subscribe and click that bell button so you get notified when that video comes out. And a couple of initial settings you might want to do with your Wim Mini is go and uh, click on that settings gear icon there go into audio settings on the very top you have the option to whether output fixed output volume uh, in case if you're connecting this to an uh, external amplifier that has volume control so you you just send fixed volume output or you can use the volume control in the vim mini and the other thing is aux input level you can choose what kind of voltage this sends out so 2 volt RMS, 1 volt RMS, there is 800 millivolt RMS and 500 millivolt RMS. Now I just leave it at 2 volt RMS. If it's not uh, 2 volt RMS in yours, just make sure it's 2 volt RMS. So that is the highest um, uh, power this can deliver. And there's a volume limit, you know, I, I leave it at 100% volume limit. And this is very important, the SPDIF output resolution. So this determines what kind of resolution digital audio signal it's going to send using the, the optical output. So go in here and make sure you select 192 her, kilohertz and 20, 24 bit rate. So that is the highest this uh, streamer can do. So make sure that that setting is there. Some of the streaming apps gives you lossless audio and uh, it goes up to 24 bit 192 kilohertz. You don't want to miss on that. So do this initial settings. And also you can play a test tone audio if it's connected. Fade in, fade out effects, I don't want that. I turn that off. And at the very bottom it says MQA beta. Looks like MQA support is coming, but still in beta. You want If you want to enable that, turn it on or turn it off. And the audio output is set to aux now. If I want to send the signal through the optical out digital signal i can do that okay the audio input a couple of options the wi-fi bluetooth this is also a bluetooth receiver and also there is an aux option pretty much connecting any other audio source into this and using this as a preamplifier that's possible too all right and there's also options to you know control the volume per source and the auto sensing of auxin so whenever you plug in an aux input it automatically turns to that input all right so that's pretty much uh, the initial and there are a lot of options in here especially if you if you scroll to the middle and you've got some eq settings there are a bunch of uh, presets available so which is nice if you want to tweak the sound Yes, I don't do that normally. I leave it at uh, flat. And there is also a parametric equalization. Now this is a four band parametric equalization and you can set each individual band independently. So if you click on this, you know, you can set up the frequency and the gain and the Q factor. Very convenient if you want to tweak the sound of the streamer. So let's talk about what streaming services this streamer supports. Now we got a few presets that we can set up and it's basically quick access to whatever you wanted to quickly access and then we've got favorites my music is basically coming from your phone if you've given access to music from your phone that's my music we've got the recently played and we've got the home music share which is basically the dlna uh, or upnp you know service you have in your network so this can pull uh, music files from your network and play it and we've got these music services Amazon Alexa Amazon music BBC radio com radio Deezer Napster open network stream Pandora Cobus radio paradise SoundCloud sound machine Spotify title tune in iHeart radio and the V tuner the V tuner is nothing but uh, net radio internet radio and uh, we've got our source selection 
with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or Auxin. I also tried playing with Amazon Alexa. I tried to connect the Alexa app with this app. I gave all the permissions. And also, I tried to name this device as Vim Mini or Mini. And I tried commanding Alexa. It did not respond. It just, just said that, uh, you know, there is no device naming so-and-so. I also tried naming it differently, but it didn't work. So, you know, uh, Amazon Alexa, it didn't work for me. I've tried Amazon Music and I tried Pandora and uh, streaming from my um, home music share uh, from the network, DLNA, that worked fine. And um, also Spotify, Spotify worked as well. One of the feature of the Vim ecosystem is that um, you could have more than one Vim streamer and uh, you could play the same song or music uh, throughout your house. And the way to do that is, you know, you need to click on this uh, link link icon uh, right there. You need to go to devices and click on the link icon. So now once you click on the link icon and you can choose, you know, whatever devices you want the same uh, music to play and then click on done. And now you've got um, a volume control uh, for each device. And also there is a master volume control. So that is handy to stream uh, the same music throughout your house. So one of the other features available in this unit is you got those responsive touch buttons on top of the, top of the unit to control volume. You could reprogram this to control your, uh, you know, skipping the tracks, either forward or backward. So in order to do that, you need to go to the settings. And if you come to the bottom, and you will see override volume buttons, the last but the one from the bottom. And you can toggle this on and off. And if you set the volume to a standard output and not a variable output, then you could use those buttons to control the tracks instead. Okay, so we are set up and uh, ready to go. And I will give it uh, some time. I listen to it and come back and talk about um, how it performs. <laughs> Okay guys, I've been spending some time with this uh, Vim Mini streamer. I've been using this uh, streamer three different ways. And the first one is I connected this streamer to my integrated amplifier, which is a Yamaha RN803. I used both the aux output as well as the SPDIF digital output. And I've been listening to this, um, the Hama song from AR Rahman. This one, it's got a lot of bass. I use this song to test out bass performance in, um, in the speakers or in, in, in the complete system. This is a good song to test out your speakers, and especially bass. Um, if you don't hear bass out of this song, and something is wrong with your system. When I used the aux output of the mini into the amplifier, I wasn't quite getting that bass punch. Uh, I mean, there there is bass, but you know, um, the deep level bass that I used to hear from this song wasn't present there. Uh, and also the dynamics wasn't quite there. There is a Burr Brown DAC inside and it all depends on the implementation. Aux output is, you know, pretty okay, I would say. Uh, it isn't bad if you're new to the high five um, music world, you wouldn't find any difference at all. But uh, if you are a critical listener, you will see that it's lacking in a little bit uh, in the dynamics areas and, and the bass is not, not full, I would say. Uh, it is missing some elements of the deep bass. Um, that's what I found out testing this song. And it all went away immediately when I switched to the SPDAF digital output using that um, optical cable. I got all the dynamics and the bass out of this song and, and it just 
it just um, sounded the way this song should sound out of my Yamaha uh, amplifier. Uh, that's something to note. And the second way I use the streamer is ta -da, using powered speakers. Now these are a pair of uh, Edifier powered speakers. Uh, it does not have a DAC inside, so it only takes uh, analog inputs. These are not the great sounding uh, speakers. This is just what I had for testing. And um, so yeah, if you have powered speakers and uh, you want to add streaming to it, this is a great way to do that. And uh, since these are, you know, mediocre speakers, uh, it doesn't sound great. I wasn't expecting any um, kind of wow factor from these speakers. So mm, the Wim Mini is a excellent, excellent option to add streaming to your power speakers. And the third way I used it is with headphones. Yes. I use two types of headphones uh, for this testing. One is a planar magnetic driver, which is the Hi-Fi Man Sundara right here. By the way, it's called Sundara and not Sundara. It's called Sundara, which means beauty in Sanskrit. Uh, so the Hi-Fi Man Sundara, which is a planar magnetic uh, driver, and also the Sennheiser HD 6XX, uh, which is a dynamic driver. The Sundara, even though it's low ohms, uh, it needs a lot of current from the amplifier to give all the dynamics. This is not one of them. Uh, it's, it's a bad pairing. Even though the bass rolls off in all the planar magnetics, I wasn't getting any bass. And, you know, the whole presentation was rough out of this AUX uh, 3.5 AUX output port. Uh, the 2 volt RMS setting that we did earlier helped. Uh, in order to get some volume but the dynamics wasn't there you know the bass wasn't there and the mid-range was a little muddy and uh, and the highs were you know not that great uh, so planar magnetics are not something to use uh, with the streamer uh, and and talking about using headphones this will be a a perfect um, uh, you know bedroom setup for you uh, just before going to bed you can listen to some streaming music. This is a great um, way to use it, but hey, don't use uh, planar magnetics. Talking about the dynamic drivers in the Sennheiser HD 6XX, I was getting a little more volume than the Sundaras. Um, even though these headphones uh, have a higher uh, ohm rating and it's hard to drive, that, you know, that two volt uh, RMS settings help here as well to get some volume out and also I was getting that bass the the quality of the headphone uh, itself uh, you know smooths out some of the rough edges so it helped uh, listening to this uh, streamer and I wouldn't say you know I got back all the dynamics that I was talking about no 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 that those roughness was there and you would uh, hear them depending on what kind of headphones you use. Uh, these are very well uh, known for smoothing out those you know, rough, rough, rough edges. Uh, that helped a lot uh, and it was listenable uh, with, this, with the streamer output. So yeah, this could be a bedroom setup uh, if you want to listen to streaming music just before you snooze off. Yeah, this could be a really, really good and use dynamic uh, driver headphones with this and not the planar magnetics. It's not going to drive it or it's not going to sound as great. Uh, so yeah, go with the dynamic driver and you should be good. And normal headphones, even not power hungry headphones, it's going to be good. It's going to be okay for most of the people. And for $100, you can't beat it. Talking about the drawbacks, what's wrong with this streamer? There are a couple of them, okay? This is not a perfect streamer at all. And the first one is whenever I go and change some songs, it'll produce a popping noise, you know? Just like you would, you know, uh, stop playing a cassette or 
with an with an old record, uh, a vinyl. I know if it's switching from one song to another, there's this pop up sound. So I was getting this, um, and not only uh, switching from one uh, track to another. Uh, it also happened when you know I was skipping to some part of the song. You know when I'm rewinding or you know going forward, that was happening. I don't know why. But that did bother me uh, a little bit because, you know, I use uh, expensive speakers and I don't want to hear that noise uh, from the speakers. Uh, I was wondering what's going on. And the other thing is whenever there is a, uh, a track playing, let's say I've got a playlist playing and I go and change the output, let's say from optical to aux or aux to uh, optical, the app will completely, you know, erase all that playlist and, and, and the songs that were playing. So let's say this track is playing, right? And if I go, if I want to change the output, I go here to devices and then select the device. And then, so this one is outputting into the aux port now. I want to change it to optical out. And you see? It stops playing the song and completely erases uh, the playlist. And now I have to go back into the streaming service and then initiate that um, you know playlist back or the songs back, which is kind of annoying. So the one other thing is uh, I like to listen to a lot of uh, smooth jazz and internet radio. So let's try to pull up uh, a internet radio station. So we go to Beat Tuner. Um, it's labeled a little different instead of saying it's internet radio, it's it's here V Tune, V Tuner, go in there and let me search for smooth jazz. Okay. And what I'm seeing is you know only the names of the stations. It doesn't give the logo or the picture to you know pick the station because some of these stations have the same names. And let me try to play 101 Smooth Jazz, one of my favorite uh, smooth jazz ch channels. And this is how it looks like in the Blim Mini. Um, no logo, nothing. But, but let me switch over to the music cast. Uh, this is Yamaha's app, and Yamaha calls it Net Radio, which is straightforward. And go to radio and do a search for smooth jazz. And I get these channels um, and radio stations with the with their logo and the picture, so I can identify. Uh, which one is which? Um, and if you look at 101 Smooth Jazz playing in, in Music Cast, you get the logo and you get the title of the song and everything, which is even better. So, one other thing, uh, when I go to access um, my music library from the network, um, wherever there is an album uh, under a folder, now Wim Mini shows up this uh, collage of um, album art. Um, it's it's a single album and it's got about 20 songs and look at this collage of the same same image let's say I pull up an artist and I have more than one album um, let's say in this case NSYNC and if you look at the albums by this artist there are there are different albums here more than four albums but you know uh, the collage of the image is just that first album. And that is my review of the Wim Mini guys. And you know what is coming up next? This bad boy right here, the Wim Amp. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification so you get notified. And also don't forget to leave a comment so you win the Wim Mini. If you want to purchase any of the gear discussed in this video, the links are below in the description. And if you would like to support this channel, please join my Patreon. I've got some exclusive content for my Patreon members. The links are below as well. Thank you for watching, guys. See you next time.